So first one, in your opinion, who is Satoshi Nakamoto? Um, I don't uh, really don't know, and I mean, you know, but you have your own theory, most probably. Well, I mean, I think you can infer something about the skill set of the person that they had to, you know, have a capability for network programming, have quite a good grasp of game theory, and a reasonable grasp of applied cryptography, and have some economic game theory understanding and a, and a kind of system designer architect perspective to assemble something in a, in a new way that people who had previously been trying to solve this problem hadn't achieved, but it's not clear whether he would be somebody who had been following these earlier discussions or somebody that joined later and had a new insight. So that, that means that there are quite a wide range of people. Of course, there are not that many people in the world with that combinations of expertise, but there's no particular guarantee that I would know this person because there are many clever people in the world from different backgrounds working on computer science, applied problems and things like that. I mean, I would suspect it's one person just because of, you know, consistency of code and difficulty of keeping privacy and secrets across a group. But other than that, yeah, we, I, th I think nobody really knows. If you get an opportunity to, to know who is it? Well, I think actually it's better that we don't, don't know. know because it, it helps for Bitcoin to be considered like a digital commodity that, you know, there was somebody that discovered the commodity, but there's not somebody, people have a background in hierarchical thinking. So some people are wired a little bit different and they don't like authority and they want to think for themselves. But many things about society are hierarchical. And so if you look at what the media tends to do, you know, sort of mass market media and the average person, they see something new and they want to like, oh, who's in charge of it? Who should I ask? Could we ask somebody to change something if it doesn't suit us? And so you know, if there was an identified founder, that thinking would lead lots of people to asking or demanding things. So the fact that that founder is kind of apocryphal, nobody knows, and presumably he's not coming back at this point, right? That, that takes away that opportunity, which I think focuses attention back towards Bitcoin being a kind of digital commodity and away from it being like a kind of startup mentality where there's a, you know, an architect or a, you know, early founder or programmer who designed the original system or something like that. So I think that's a positive actually that he stepped away and, you know, presumably he had some thinking about why he chose to step away, which may be connected with his line of thinking.